Is anyone here who can hear me? And is anyone signed in for this thing? Give me some feedback. Yes. Oh, yeah. Cool. Hey. Yeah. Good morning. Oh, fantastic. So let's see how this actually works. If we get this thing going. So how do you sign in? Uh, well, um, what you need to do is you need to use your Google Mail account. Uh, if you've got one, I hope you do. And uh, then just simply sa uh, sign in into the chat. Ah, fantastic. Oh, God, so many people. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't expect uh, so many people to be around at that time of the day. I'm really pleased. Wonderful. Excellent. So let's make a start with this, uh, with this new technology. And please um, tell me if there are any technical problems, because uh, obviously this is, uh, this is new stuff that I'm doing here. Anyway, what I want to do with you today is to show you how does a buffer work. How does a buffer work? And I told you, uh, without buffers, you would not be uh, able to survive. You would not be able to live. So I thought uh, I will uh, tag on to what we've done last week in the lecture where we try to calculate the different pHs of different solutions. And going back to uh, this, what we have done. Um, hi, mom. Somebody just said. Oh, well, hi, son. Okay, uh, never mind. Um, I'm, uh, I'm just uh, trying to read uh, simultaneously. So we said, for example, we have 100 milliliter of uh, pure water. And uh, obviously pure water has a pH of 7. And we also take one milliliter of um, one molar hydrochloric acid solution. Uh, can somebody quickly uh, calculate the pH of this one molar uh, hydrochloric acid solution? I know we've done that last time, but uh, just to, you know, just to get the calculator out and uh, let's get working. So what is the pH of a one molar hydrochloric acid solution. And I give you a little bit of time. Okay, yep, so the first answers are coming in. pH is zero. Excellent, well done. So we also said what would happen if we add this one milliliter of hydrochloric acid into our 100 milliliter of water. So obviously uh, we would have 101 milliliter. It's a little bit like the Dalmatians. And obviously the pH would change. And in order to calculate how much the pH changes when we add this to water, uh, what uh, then would we need to do is we need to calculate how many moles of protons we actually add to our water. And I showed you how we do that. So we can do mole. How many moles do we have in this one milliliter of one uh, molar acid? So we said we have one mole per liter. That's our concentration here. So the moles are in the right place. We need to get rid of the liter. And we have 1 times 10 to the minus 3 liter. That's from the milliliter here. So the liters cancel out. And we have 1 times 10 to the minus 3 mole. Or we can also write 1 millimole. And we now can calculate what is our concentration of protons. Concentration of protons. And we said the concentration is the moles. 1 times 10 to the minus 3 mole. Um, 
and we have a total of 101 milliliter and that gives us a, a PA so that would be uh, what is that roughly 1 times 10 to the minus 2 whoops I said 2 not 3 10 to the minus 2 molar roughly okay happy with that and now we can do the pH of this solution pH equals minus log oh can you do that for me quickly I don't have a calculator here 1 times 10 to the minus 2 what do we get for the pH Oh, don't worry, Kylie. I know that you uh, you have problems. pH two, excellent, lovely, excellent. So our pH actually goes from seven to two. A dramatic change, a life-threatening change. A living being would not be able to survive a change like that. That's why we have buffers. So how does a buffer actually work? Okay, now let's say we have 100 milliliters of a buffer. And this buffer is made up of 50 millimolar acid, HA, and 50 millimolar base and I indicated by a minus because we know that this is a conjugate acid base pair okay so we have 50 millimolar acid 50 millimolar base uh, a total of 100 millimolar uh, 100 milliliter okay and we could say the capacity of this buffer capacity of buffer is just simply the concentrations together so that would be a capacity of 100 millimolar in total of acid and base right now the pka of the acid pKa of the acid it should be in this case 7. Now is this acid ah okay somebody just asked me how do you know that this is a conjugate base well we said the difference between a conjugate base and its acid is just one proton so that is the difference between a uh, conjugate acid and its well its base basically does that make sense okay so the pka of acid is of this particular acid is seven is it a strong acid or a weak acid what do you think With a pKa of seven. Ah, neutral, weak, 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 weak. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay, pKa of seven. This seven just simply means that the acid dissociates only tiny little bit. Don't confuse the pKa of something with the pH. If a pH, if the pH is 7, then the whole thing is neutral. But if the pKa is 7, it just simply means fairly weak acid. Fairly weak 
acid. So these two things are actually rather weak, pKa. It's rather weak. And don't confuse the pH with the pKa, okay? So we have a pKa of 7. We know our acid and our base uh, concentration. Now we can calculate what is the pH of this buffer pH equals, and we learned the henderson hasselbalch equation, so it is pH equals pKa minus log of the acid concentration divided by the base concentration. So we just simply calculate our pH for this particular uh, solution. Can somebody try and do this, please? What is the pH of this buffer solution? Ah, here's a very good question. Would it ever be base over acid instead? Oh, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Because you can write it as pH equals pKa plus log acid over base. Ah, sorry, 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 my bad. Base over acid. This is what I actually meant to say. And people do the calculations. Yes, the pH is 7. pH is 7. You are absolutely right. So basically, we have the same situation as with, with our water. So we calculated or we said water has a pH of 7. And in this particular case, our buffer has the pH of 7. Okay? Now, what would happen if we actually add 1 milliliter of protons of 1... Oh, God, I'm, I'm completely losing it today. What would happen if we do if we add one milliliter of a one molar hydrochloric acid to the buffer. We know what happens when we add it to water because it changes the pH dramatically from 7 to 2, but what would happen if we add it to the buffer? So we said this here is actually one millimole of protons that we add. Okay? So, what would happen to our buffer if we add one millimole of protons? Okay, what have we got? We have 100 milliliter of 50 millimolar acid. And the same 50 millimolar base. And all together in 100 milliliter. Okay, somebody asked me. Yes, Klapper is a positive. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Fantastic, there are. You are, you are, answer, you are answering. Uh, your own question. And why is the pH uh, of the pH earlier? How do you get uh, 7? Well, because I know that uh, pure water is actually has a pH of 7. P water is neutral. But you are answering the, the, the questions now. That's, that's, that's brilliant. So, 
how many millimole of acid, how many millimole of base do we have? So let's calculate the acid millimole or mole. So we have 50 times 10 to the minus 3 mole per liter. That's our concentration here. And the mole are in the right place. And we have actually 100 milliliter. So that would be 0 0.1 liter. Liters cancel out. And what we have, if we do this calculation, is we have 5 millimole acid in our solution. Oh, base, uh, um, don't worry if you miss anything, by the way, uh, I'm recording it anyway, and it will be on YouTube, so you can see that. Uh, that's, uh, that's not a problem, so don't stress. And by the way, there are no sign-in sheets today. <laughs> okay, how many mole of base do we have? Anyone? Is it still working? Five millimole, exactly. So we it's it's exactly the same. Five millimole of base we have. So we have five millimole of acid and five millimole of base. Now, what happens if I add protons from the HCl, from HCl to the base? What will happen? What do I get? Ha, ha, ha. Exactly. I get more HA. Right? So basically, by adding protons from the acid, I get more HA. What happens to the A minus? A minus decreases, exactly. A minus goes down, HA goes up. Absolutely right. So the base concentration goes down, the acid concentration goes up. So we added one millimole, that is what we calculated up here, of the protons. We had originally 5 millimole of the base and we had 5 millimole of the acid. So when we add the protons, how many millimoles of acid will we get? So how many millimoles of acid will we get if we add this one millimole? And this is a tricky question. Let's see if you can do that. Six. 
Somebody said six. Six millimole. Ah. Yes, you are absolutely right. We have six millimole because we added basically one millimole of acid. What happens to the what happens to the base? Four millimole. Oshani says four. Yes, you are absolutely right. We have four millimole. So, one millimole of the base is converted into an additional millimole of the acid. So, what we have now is we have changed our amount of acid to base. Okay? Right. So, how does that change our buffer? Let's see. Let's write the Henderson Hasselberg equation again. pH equals pKa minus log of the new acid concentration divided by the new base concentration. Okay, so we have pKa equals 7 minus log. Now we said our new acid concentration is 6 millimole in a volume of 101 milliliter. And the base is 4 millimole also in the same volume, 101 milliliter. Uh, in fact, we don't really need these, uh, these 101 because we see that they easily cancel out. So what we get is 7 minus log 6 millimole divided by 4 millimole. And again, the millimoles cancel out. So we have 7 minus log of 6 divided by 4 is 1.5. Is that right? I think so. And somebody has already done it. Yes, oh, great. Guys, you rock. So our pH is now 6.8 something 2. Let's say 6.82. Ha! We've done it. Now, just to be precise. Well, yeah, it, you can be precise, but it doesn't make a lot of sense if you are so precise because you've got the pKa only to one decimal, basically. But, you know, I honor your precision. So we have 6.82, or 6.8, let's say 6.8. Now, our pH goes down from original, or I should probably say, the change in pH is from originally 7. That was our original pH of this buffer. And it now goes down to 6.8. These are only 0 0.2 difference. Why does it decrease? Why does the pH go down? Because, very simply, we added we add an acid. We add an acid to the buffer and therefore 
we make it more acidic. And hence, we would expect that the pH goes down. And indeed, the pH goes down. And therefore, we see this drop in pH. But Thai uh, explained it much better, more acid than base. That's uh, why the pH is lower. So now, let's compare what we found. In water, the pH goes from 7 to 2 when we add the acid. In buffer, the pH goes from 7 to 6.8. And this is actually something that this change of 0 0.2, 0 0.2, this is this change, this is something that many living organisms can deal with. A ch change of, when I write this as a delta, a change of 5 pH units is usually lethal. And I hope you admire my drawing. Uh, wait a moment, I forgot the teeth. A change of 0.2 units usually not a big problem. So having a buffer or not having a buffer is a matter of life and death. The German Picasso, absolutely. <laughs> you guys crack me up. You see, buffer is absolutely crucial, is important. And you have now seen how you can, ch how you can actually calculate what happens if we add an acid or a base. Well, actually, we haven't done the base. What would happen if we add one milliliter of a one molar sodium hydroxide solution? In water, so we have again 100 milliliter. Our pH would change from 7 To, so what's the pH? pH of of one molar NaOH. What's the pH of that? What do we get? So we know that we can do the pOH equals minus log. Yes, pOH we get minus log of the one molar NaOH. This, of course, is zero. And therefore, the pOH would be zero. We also know that pH plus pOH equals 14. And if the pH, if the pOH is 0, our pH would be 14. So the pH would be 14. Okay? And 
and we can calculate how many mole there are in this NaOH. So we have one milliliter of a one molar NaOH solution. How many moles do we have of NaOH? So we have one mole per liter times one milliliter, one times 10 to the minus three liter, cancel that out. So yeah, you're absolutely right, one millimole. So it's basically the same scenario It's the same scenario that we had before, but this time not with acid, we have it now with a base. And we can, you could do the calculation, I'm not going through that because I might be running out of time, but if we add this one milliliter of one molar NaOH, our water would change from pH 7 to pH 12. You can do this calculation again um, in, in your own time. So again, it's a change of 5 pH units. How would our buffer change? Remember, we had 100 milliliter. We had five millimole of the acid. We had five millimole of the base originally. What happens if we add to this one millimole of OH minus, because that is what makes it. Oshana says we now get four millimole HA And we have, I come back to, uh, to Loka, I come back to your question in a minute. Six millimole of the base. Because we take away protons from the acid. And therefore, we create more A minus. So we can write our pH equals pKa, that was 7, and people have done the calculation already. Great! Minus log of 4 over 6. And this gives us a pH of 7.2. Now the pH goes up because we add base. So if we make something more basic, then the pH increases and therefore it makes sense. So our pH in buffer changes from 7 to 7.2. And again, it's a pH change of 0 0.2. That makes sense? And the 
organism would be easy, would, would, would have no problem to survive. Now, I've been asked, why is it 5 pH units? Well, if you remember with the HCl, the change was uh, 5 pH units. So with pH, with, with one mole, one milliliter of a one molar HCl, we changed 5 pH units. And if we do exactly the same with an OH minus, same concentration, same volume, it will also be 5 pH units. Does that uh, answer the question, Tuloka? Hope so. But I, I, can, I can show you later uh, again. Right. So... Here is the last big thing. We said we have in our original buffer five millimole of acid and five millimole of base. Right? What would happen if I add six millimole of acid, of protons? What would happen to that? What do we get? Ten millimole of acid, mm -hmm. we would get ten millimole of acid, acid, uh, but then, wait a moment, we have more acid, don't we? How many, how many base would we have? Ah, Michael says we have 10 millimole acid plus one millimole protons. Mm -hmm. So we have zero millimole of the base because everything has been converted. So let's write our henderson hasselbalch equation. pH equals pKa minus log 10 divided by zero. What do we get? I can tell the calculators are uh, start to glow. Aha. Uh -huh. Can't divide by zero. What do you error? Six? How did you get six? Math error. How do you get six? Ah, you have ah. I see how you get six. No, no, you don't. You don't do log ten. You have to divide ten by zero first. So what is ten divided? Ten divided by zero. Math error. Calculator told you error. The calculator is right. You can't do that. You can't calculate that. 
You can't calculate that. And because you can't calculate that, you can't calculate the pK. And because you can't calculate the pKa, you can't calculate the pH. What the heck is going on? In this case, your calculator is absolutely right. You can't calculate it. And in chemical terms, it means that the buffer no longer works. Chemists say the buffer breaks down. It's just simply exhausted. Buffer is dead. Because we have exceeded the capacity of the buffer. So we have five millimole acid, five millimole base. And by adding six millimole of protons, we have killed the buffer. Yes, it has exceeded the capacity of the buffer with, I should probably say, with these concentrations. What we could do, however, is we could make a different buffer. We could say, for example, we have 100 milliliter. We have ah, here's a very good question. Why is it not 11 millimole? Well, we only have five millimole of acid and five millimole of base. Does that make sense, Bozula? So 100 millimole, and we just simply say we have 2 millimole of acid Lydia, yeah, absolutely. It exceeds the capacity. And we say we have 8 millimole of base. We could set up this buffer. We still have a total capacity of 10 millimole. But what happens What happens if we use this one? What would be our pH in this case? pH equals pKa minus log, and now we have 2 over 8. What would we get from that? pKa is 7. So our new buffer is 7.6. That's right. Yep, well done, guys. So that's our new buffer. Now I add to this 6 millimole of protons. What will I get? 
When I add the protons, I get seven minus, how has the HA changed? HA becomes two plus six, and the base becomes eight minus six. So I have log eight divided by two. Absolutely right, I've got eight HA and two A minus. And my pH, therefore, would be 6.4. Now, in this case, I can do it. I had to fiddle around with my buffer. I never thought I would say that. Fiddle around with my buffer. Can I get arrested for that? So if I fiddle around with my buffer anyway, I can make it that the buffer actually still works, but it will start at a different pH. So in this case, the buffer doesn't break down, but my starting uh, solutions are different. Does it make sense to you guys? Well, if it does, and if you don't have any further questions, I think this world premiere of uh, YouTube was not too bad. It would be great if you could leave some comments about how you found this, uh, whether uh, you felt it was interactive, whether you learned something. Um, and it would be absolutely superb if I could get some feedback uh, from you, because then we could, um, you know, do more of these things, if you like. And I shall see you tomorrow when we talk about new stuff in inferential statistics. Oh, thank you. Clapping. Yes. And a, and a big bow. Thank you very much and see you tomorrow. Take care. Bye-bye.